Hi, guys, and welcome to another episode of Cafecito and Chisme con Ray. Uh, I am here. This is podcast number two or episode two, or actually, this is the episode one, I would say, um, because the other one was the intro. And uh, today we're going to be talking about brujería. Now, a lot of you know that I'm mixed, but predominantly Latino, and I uh, have another mixtures in my bloodline, some European, some Portuguese, some African, you know, a lot of different mixtures, and I'm proud of my heritage, but predominantly growing up with a Latin mom, uh, I learned a lot about uh, the topics, you know, I would listen to her and the stories and those uh, of the older people around me, the older generations, you know, and they would talk a lot about uh, brujería and what was brujería? Was it real? So what is brujería? Um, so that is witchcraft. A lot of people were talking about witchcraft. You know, uh, there would be stories. We heard everything. If you grew up in a Latin culture, um, you heard about, you know, la lechuza. You've heard about la llorona. You've heard about mal aire. You've heard about, um, you know, all these other topics that eventually I'm going to talk about on here. But, um, in this episode, we're going to be talking about brujería. Is it real? Um, these are the topics that I kind of discuss in my courses as well that I'm offering or classes that I'm teaching uh, when I'm mentoring and coaching students. And if you're wanting to sign up for that, you can always go to my website, go under the events and classes section. And of course, it wouldn't be true to this podcast if I didn't have my cafecito. So, And so you can see it is coffee. Um, so we're going to talk about what is brujería. So brujería is is basically what I just said. It's witchcraft. Um, a lot of people can be affected by it in many different ways. Um, sometimes it's unintentional. Uh, sometimes it can be generational. And sometimes it can be also um, something that is targeted with malintent towards a person, meaning that the person or the witch or the bruja que está haciendo el trabajo or the person that's doing this this work um, is doing it with intention specifically to hurt you. Now, um, what's the difference between brujería and voodoo and santería and uh, all these other little, uh, all these other magics uh, or forms of religious beliefs or magic? There really is no difference. Brujería to me, it encompass, encompasses all of it, all forms, whether it's voodoo, voodoo, hoodoo, root, you know, that's root work with the hoodoo, um, santeria, uh, working, you know, with different saints, uh, you know, cursing someone, hexing someone. Um, it's no different. It, to me, it, it is all one and the same. Now, um, just like, you know, uh, people are fearful of this. I think this is why a lot of people in the Latin community are afraid to come to someone like me that is a white witch and also psychic and a medium because they feel like this is work of the devil or they've been conditioned by the church to believe that um, what we do is wrong or it's evil. And um, and a lot of people, and, and this was a recent experience. I had someone that I, because I live in Texas, for those of you that are not aware, and I recently had something done where I needed something done in my house. And it was a person that is from Mexico that helped me, um, and we became good friends. And I asked him, and he looked at me, he's like, what do you do? And I'm very honest. I don't lie about it. I'm not ashamed. I said, I'm a psychic medium. You know, I said, que, you know, hago lecturas psíquicas, soy un clarividente, medium. Y me entendió. You know, he understood exactly what I was saying, but he also wanted to, it was the look on his face, almost like when you come out and say what you do. And, and I said, uh, ¿Por qué haces esa cara? Que, you know, I, I asked him in English. I said, why are you making, well, in Spanish, I said, why are you making that face? Did I say something that made you feel uncomfortable? I mean, do you believe? Because, uh, you know, Yo me imagino que si creen en esas cosas, si son de México o, you know, naciste en, en ese ambiente donde en México hacen muchas cosas así, de brujería, hechizos, cosas así, maldiciones, you know, and, and this is not just in Mexico. Um, what I've just said is like, if you grew up in Mexico, I would figure like you'd be, you know, accustomed to it because believe it or not, Mexico is one of the biggest uh, known areas uh, to be very immersed into, you know, witchcraft and whatnot, um, you know, spell work, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's 
all around the world, regardless of where you go. Uh, I don't want to just like isolate Mexicans or Hispanics uh, or Latinos uh, because it's in South America. It's in Asia. It's in China. Every culture has its uh, its witchcraft or its brujería. But, um, you know, when you hear, you know, that uh, alguien me hizo brujería, you know, que siento que alguien uh, me puso algo, you know, it's it can be very true. How do you know if somebody did something to you uh, spiritually, you know, using brujería? A lot of times um, things as simple as like using a photo uh, or knowing that person's date of birth or name can be used in spell work, you know, against a person. Um, if you, you know, sometimes they will use pieces of your hair, they can use personal objects, uh, you know, it can, it can be um, something like a, a piece of jewelry, an undergarment, it could even be bodily fluids that have been obtained or used from a toilet paper or something that you wiped yourself with that can be used in spell work. Why do they need physical items uh, to do the work? Because it is thought that it's a piece of you. It's a stronger connection in putting and getting that work to be more effective. Now, the thing is with magic, there are ofrendas or like offerings that we do in, in the witch world. And I say me because I'm not thinking that I'm better than anybody. I don't do things to hurt people. I do, you know, candle magic and things to protect myself and to protect others, um, whether it's like to manifest money, uh, love, etc. But I, I do not do dark things. But I'm saying that um, a lot of times we witches use these things to cause harm towards others. And that's wrong because I firmly believe, although in brujería or in different magics, a lot of people do not believe that if you do use you know, any form of magic that, or you curse someone or hurt someone that it's going to come back to you because they believe in an eye and an eye. And I fully, fully understand and respect everyone's individual beliefs, but I am a firm believer that what we put out and what we give out, we're going to receive that back in. So you have to be very mindful of the intent and the energy that you're sending towards others. If you are wanting to hurt them, I'm a firm believer to giving it up to God and letting God handle it. You know, I still believe in God. A hundred percent, whether that is a bean or it's a, a woman or a male, you know, God to me is everything. He is uh, love or uh, God is love. So uh, it, he's the birds, the bees, the trees, everything that you see here on earth. That's what I feel God is or that source. But going back to brujería, it's been known that a lot of people do this mainly to retain love. The people that I've seen, you know, or have heard conversations, it was because usually it was from a female who, you know, was worried about losing her husband or her partner. And so she did magic to draw that person back in. Now, the problem with that is that um, sometimes with spell work, you cannot bend the free will or the destiny that's already written. So sometimes you, if you're a witch, I will give you an example. I was doing a spell once for love. Uh, on someone that I was interested in. And spirit was like, you know, that was wrong. You know that you shouldn't be doing that. And so what happened, I used a candle and I burned the candle and the candle cut off, <laughs> turned it on, it cut off. I turned it, otra vez lo prendí y se apagó. You know, so it turned off because it was not meant for me to do that. That's why I'm saying, if you're doing magic, on another person so they to make them love you or to make them feel some connection to you it's wrong to me it's wrong because it's not going to it's not going to always have the effect you maybe that person will be drawn to you for a little bit of time but then eventually that can actually blow up and reverse in your face and you could lose that person and if you talk to a lot of people who have done that or have gone to brujas a lot of people don't do spell work or brujería they will go to people like myself or someone that is just not a medium or psychic they're curanderos what we call curanderos uh brujos brujas or they just do their spell casters which is there's danger in that be very careful who you go to i i know that a lot of people get desperate and you know they want to seek out that you know that person to have something done for them because they don't know how to do it themselves or not well versed in magic, but they heard from a friend of a friend that this person is able to do brujería and stuff, you know, for them. 
The problem with that is not every practitioner works in the light like I do. There are people, and I'm not putting myself up in a pedestal, and I'm not demonizing people that work in dark magic. There's witches that work in white and dark magic, and there's a reason for that. Everybody has a reason. Again, I come with no judgment. I want to be very clear for those that are watching that maybe do black magic or have dabbled in that, or they're more of like a gray witch, you know, which they toggle in between both. But you have to be careful. Not everyone works in the light. And those that work in the dark typically are um, asking spirits or sometimes demons to do that work for them, which is the dangers that follow with that. And so what dangers can be done or followed, you know, if you are the one you know, reaching out to have another witch do that to you. It doesn't matter that you're not the one directly doing it and it's somebody else because the thing is that it's being done for you. And the spirits and the demons that are invoked um, usually know this. And sometimes it is, um, sometimes it's going to, it's going to cause um, for them to want a pay. Okay, so, Let me un let me clear clear something up and backtrack a little bit. The spirit world doesn't do anything for free. If you are a witch or you are someone that's doing brujeria, you're not doing it by yourself. We as humans do not have that power to do you know uh, magic, and it's going to just take effect by itself. Yes, some some things will go through you know intentions, prayers. But usually it's our spirits, like spirit guides or saints that we pray to or that um, we believe in. And those spirits are the ones that um, are the ones that are carrying out that work. Sometimes some of these practitioners are not working with good spirits. They're working with demons and demons usually want something in return. You know, this is why whenever I do candle magic for myself, I always have in my altar a glass of water to kind of and maybe like something sweet or a treat to help the saints to help the angels and give back you know it's no different than like a catholic church has the eucharist and and the um the wine you know and and i know that's a holy sacrament so it's not the same and i'm not comparing it but in every religion there's like an offering there's something that is uh, representational you know and so if you have an altar and you are a witch you're you basically are putting things on the altar as an offering to the spirit world to thank them for helping you or assisting you with the work that you're doing the problem is is that if you're going to a practitioner and they're telling you that they're doing these things, they can open up so much can of worms for you. I've had people come to me as a psychic medium and they have reached out to a person and they start having everything in their life falling apart. Um, they have uh, felt like they were cursed. And sometimes they actually are. Um, sometimes witches that do these spell works also do a spell to bind that person to them or to make them believe that there's something wrong and um and and they end up being victimized by this person usually like thousands of dollars later they'll tell them that they need 500 a thousand three thousand to do this work for them and some people are so scared in that moment and that's how you know that that's a scammer if someone is telling you they're charging you that much it's outrageous amounts um that's that's not you know it's not that's not normal um and it's not something that you should do it should be a red flag to go the other way if you feel that that person makes you feel anxiety when you approach them or you heard about them maybe you check out their page stay away from them they're not for you um but you will know if um if if, if something is not going right uh automatically you know, if you're during, doing the candle magic or you're doing, you know, something else, um, some other like putting doing a honey jar or doing putting someone in a jar to hurt them uh, again or putting someone even as simple as in the freezer, you know, to a freezing spell. There's so many different spells and I'm not going to go all into it. But for this podcast, I want to just talk about the dangers of brujeria and also, um, you know, the stuff that you need to know. I, I think it's it, it, we owe it to ourselves. Todos debemos de saber que hay peligro cuando hacemos cosas malas o hacemos magia, magia blanca, magia negra. Hay consecuencias. So I've just basically said, you know, when we use magic, there are consequences. 
if somebody has done brujería on you, what are the typical symptoms that you would feel? There's the evil eye. De repente te sientes mal, malestares, um, náusea, uh, no puedes dormir. So initially what I said was that um, if you have been a victim of, uh, you know, any kind of this mad, you know, witchcraft, you're going to have nausea. You might have some, um, like you're feeling headaches. You're, um, you're feeling like the evil eye. All of a sudden you have like body aches mysteriously. You feel sick. You might even feel as if, uh, you know, things are not just not going well for you. Uh, you could have bad dreams, nightmares, you're feeling presences, things are breaking on you. Um, there is an infestation of bugs, you know, um, cosas se, se aparecen de repente como um, miras espíritus en, en tu casa o tienes pesadillas um, o sientes que cosas a, alrededor de ti no están saliendo bien. Um, usually like if something, if you had brujería done to you, um, you might be thinking of this person obsessively and you don't know why you can't get them out of your brain. I'm not saying that that's every instance, but usually if something is done to someone, they feel this, this uh, weird, um, unexplainable you know, obsession with this person and they can't get them out of their head or they're constantly thinking of them, even if they're not in good speaking terms, et cetera. Uh, other things that you can have mysteriously, you know, happen is, um, you know, everything uh, in your life is starting to fall apart. You're having trouble in your finances. Your money is just going out um, and it's happening in the in threes. Usually it'll happen not all the time, but it'll be like a series of things. Maybe your car broke down. Maybe something in your car is not working. Maybe your phone broke, you broke the screen, you know, um, and et cetera. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of different signs that you, and you will know because it's, these are things that normally don't happen to you. Um, and it's just, uh, people, tend to ignore them and think, oh, it's just, you know, this is a coincidence or not, you know, but um, this is why it's so important to protect yourself. So if you've been the victim of brujería, how do you fix that? How do you, you know, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because again, I do teach classes about this, but for the purposes of this podcast, um, you would, you know, amp up your spiritual protection. There's a reason why I wear um, like a blue stone here. This is a Tanzanite um, but I wear symbolisms. I wear a lot of crystals. I have bracelets on my right hand. On my left hand, I have the evil eye bracelet because this is the left hand that you receive energy, receive blessings, and I don't want to receive any evil. So obviously I have that. That's why I have it tattooed on my arm as well. You can't see it, but this is the evil eye. I have it, you know, I have different um, protection methods. You can also Visualize a white bubble of light around you to protect you from negative energies, um, amulets like crosses, crucifixes. These are things that are going to be beneficial for you uh, and protecting your energy and protecting you from attacks. You know, doing limpias or clean, cleansing your energy is importante que siempre uh, hagas tus limpias. No importa que sea con colonias o sea con palo santo o que usan palmas o una rama de, de ruda. Uh, es importante limpiar la energía que tú tienes. So, again, what I'm saying is that no matter if you're using like a ruta um, twig, you know, a branch, or you're using uh, Palo Santo holy water on yourself or sea salt, or you're taking a bath in uh, sea salt. Some people go to places that have sea, uh, salt lamps and Himalayan salt lamps, and they just sit in that. These are protective measures to protect yourself, but you also must protect your environment. You know, if you live in a house, um, you know, it's important to sage the inside or bless the inside and the outside. So like for me, I go out all, all around my property and I'll burn red dragon's blood sage. And I have put other protections on the outside of my property as well as the inside, because again, you want to have double added protection, layer protection. And if you are a spiritualist doing any kind of work of healing, Reiki, shamanism, you know, or you're a medical practitioner, you're a nurse, you're a hairdresser, you're laying hands, you're around people all the time. We are absorbing energy all the time. And sometimes people that have had brujería done to them, it affects us as well. So again, it's very important to, uh, you know, to cleanse our energy, just cleanse and protect as much as you can. And with that, I will leave you with this episode of Cafecito and Chisme con Rey. Stay tuned for the next one. We'll be talking about something else. All right, guys. Bye.